NASCAR seasons. Some are good, some are bad, and some are just plain meh. But when it comes to chaos in its most pure form, look no further than one of NASCAR's most entertaining seasons, 2014. So what made 2014 so memorable? It wasn't so much the racing itself, rather the week-to-week storylines both on and off the racetrack. But to understand what made this season so different, we first have to understand how we got here to begin with. 2013 was the first year of the Gen 6 car, the car that would put the stock back in stock car. Uh, kinda. That was more of a marketing campaign than the actual truth. It just looks slightly better than the COT did. And the first season of this new era in NASCAR was met with a very resounding... Yeah, 2013 isn't exactly looked back on as one of the most exciting seasons. In fact, it's actually very forgettable. Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson pretty much had a battle of who could put the viewers to sleep the fastest nearly every week, with Johnson claiming his sixth championship in a rather anticlimactic fashion. And the Gen 6 car seemed to struggle to pass on everything from short tracks to super speedways. Sound familiar to anybody else? So to make 2014 a little bit more spicy, NASCAR did what they do best. Change the rules. They would introduce a taller 8-inch spoiler, made alterations to the front splitter, and did away with ride height inspections. The result was a combination of high horsepower and high downforce the likes that we'd never seen before. These cars were fast and stuck to the racetrack, producing ludicrous speeds at tracks like Michigan and Charlotte that we hadn't seen since the invention of the restrictor plate. Admittedly, I think we look back on this package with rose-tinted glasses a bit. Yes, seeing the cars go insanely fast was really cool, but the high downforce and tall spoiler also created massive dirty air effects in the corners. And with how aerodynamic these cars were, as the season went on, we would see teams start fashioning their side skirts into the NASCAR equivalent of dragging a red shell behind you in Mario Kart, with the slightest contact resulting in an immediate cut tire. Bruh. Remember that for later. But beyond cars and packages, 2014 gave us arguably the biggest rules revision of all time, the newly revamped playoff system, at the time just referred to as the Chase Grid. It's theorized that Brian France dreamt this system up in a drunken rage after Jimmy Johnson won a sixth championship, with many just blatantly referring to it as the anti-Jimmy system at the time. But regardless of your thoughts on it, it created exactly what NASCAR wanted. Chaos. With win and you're in, eliminations with full points resets, and a winner-take-all race. The stakes were now higher than they had ever been before. The season started off with a bang, with a wildly entertaining Daytona 500 that was the polar opposite of the 2013 snooze fest, with NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Jr., finally returning to Daytona victory lane, making him the first driver to ever qualify for the new playoffs. A few weeks later, Kyle Busch would win a thriller at Auto Club Speedway, where both the high speeds of the 2014 package and the new tire developed by Goodyear were both on full display. The very next week, Brother Kurt would pull off a remarkable comeback in Martinsville after an early race dust-up with Brad Keselowski. Trust me, that won't be the last time you hear that name in this video. Brad even pulled off an impressive 22-second long middle finger out the window, but it didn't stop Kurt from getting back to victory lane. So if you're keeping track, by the end of March, the newly revised Gen 6 car had proved that it could put on entertaining races on all types of racetracks. And even the road courses were no exception as Carl Edwards pulled off a bold tire management strategy to win at Sonoma, and AJ Allmendinger at Watkins Glen would be the first to demonstrate just how intense win and you're in truly was, delivering an all-time classic finish. Not every race was a banger though, as I mentioned earlier, the massive dirty air effects did lead to a few blowouts, but by and large, fans were pretty satisfied with what they were seeing. And it certainly helped that 2014 was proving to be a resurgent year for fan favorites Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Going into the regular season finale at Richmond, Jeff Gordon led Dale Jr. by 21 points, and both had three wins. They weren't alone, though, as Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, and Jimmy Johnson also had three wins of their own, showing that the season was not dominated by any one driver. And after that dreadfully boring Richmond race, highlighted by a lone catch fence sitter, the 16-driver field was finally set for the new chase. And this is where things would get dialed up to 11. Brad Keselowski rode the momentum of his Richmond win to another win at the Chase opener in Chicago. And the very next week, Penske newcomer Joey Logano would follow it up with a victory at New Hampshire. Finally, to close out the round of 16, Jeff Gordon would win Dover. Not much drama occurred in the first round, as the drivers that nobody expected to make it, like AJ Allmendinger and Eric Almarola, were quickly weeded out. At Kansas, Logano continued Team Penske's hot streak with a fifth win on the season. But it was the middle point of the chase where we finally saw tensions boil over. Kevin Harvick took the checkered flag narrowly over Jeff Gordon that night in Charlotte, but not many really remember that, because all eyes were on Brad Keselowski. 
Kislowski attempted to hit Denny Hamlin under the cooldown lap as retaliation for contact earlier in the race, only to embarrassingly miss and spit himself out. Coming into the pits, Brad would only chase down Denny for a second time, but also door slammed Matt Kenseth, who made contact with Brad earlier under the yellow flag. In doing so, Brad inadvertently slammed into the back of innocent bystander Tony Stewart. I know, not a phrase that you're accustomed to hearing. So Stewart backs into the front of Keselowski's car and goes on his merry way. Denny Hamlin is restrained by officials after the race as he attempts to look for Brad, but NASCAR couldn't contain the true cold-blooded killer. While Denny Hamlin had temporarily stolen the spotlight, Matt Kenseth stealthily tracked down Brad Kay and delivered a takedown worthy of getting him hired as an assassin. I think that's the moment where people knew this new playoff system was intense. It's one thing to see hotheads like Hamlin and Keselowski going at it after the race, but the moment a soft-spoken guy like Matt Kenseth gets involved, you know this is something different. Keselowski would overcome all the drama to win the very next race at Talladega, though. Fittingly enough, beating none other than Matt Kenseth to the line. After a monumental season, Dale Jr. would tragically be eliminated due to no fault of his own after being caught up in the big one. His Hendrick teammate and defending champion Jimmy Johnson would also join him on the sideline, as would Casey Kane and Kyle Busch. Even Jeff Gordon, who had led the points all season long, narrowly escaped elimination on this day. This system had already proved that it didn't matter who you were or what you had done, the chaos would eventually catch up with you. To kick off the round of eight, Dale Jr. would hold off a hard-charging Jeff Gordon at Martinsville for a bittersweet victory. No fists would fly after this Martinsville race, but with drivers like Earnhardt, Gordon, and Stewart all finishing up front, this truly felt like the last hurrah for NASCAR's greatest generation of drivers. But ultimately, this would be the calm before the storm as the following race at Texas is where all hell finally broke loose. With only four laps remaining, Clip Boyer would do what he did best, cost Jeff Gordon a surefire chance at a win. Except your 15th place finish, Clint! What are you doing?! Anyway, remember those absolute weapons I mentioned poking off the sides of these 2014 cars? Well, Brad Keselowski had one, and he had an even bolder restart. With one of the most ridiculous three-wide pass attempts ever made, Brad Keselowski would shove his car right in the hornet's nest to the detriment of Jeff Gordon. This was the cut tire heard around the world. And knowing that his golden ticket to the Final Four had just been stolen, Gordon went to tell Brad Keselowski exactly how he was feeling. And out of nowhere, I just got slammed with the two and it cut my left rear tire. And he's just... He's just a dip, you know, I mean, the way he races, I don't know how he's ever won a championship, and I'm just sick and tired. I mean, that's why everybody's fighting him and running him down, and, uh, you know, your emotions are high. That was a huge, huge race for us. In the aftermath of the Texas brawl, Kevin Harvick would cruise to another easy Phoenix win. But the points battle was anything but boring, as pretty much everybody from Kenseth to Newman were leading the standings at one point or another. It wasn't until the closing laps that the playoff picture was even becoming remotely clear. Jeff Gordon came home second, but after Ryan Newman absolutely body-bagged Kyle Larson in the final corner, he would ultimately come up one point shy of advancing to the final four. Just like that, the two best drivers all season long, Gordon and Keselowski, were out of the running. Other than Kevin Harvick winning his way in, the others in the final four, Hamlin, Logano, and Newman, all survived on pure attrition. None of them had particularly great races in the round of eight, they just so happened to be the only ones who avoided the carnage. And at Homestead the very next week, it was the winless driver Ryan Newman who almost shocked the world with a championship that probably would have buried the system faster than you can blink. But Kevin Harvick, who had caught fire at season's end, would be the one to pull it into victory lane for his lone Cup Series championship, putting an exclamation point on one of NASCAR's most memorable seasons. Admittedly, as a Gordon fan, this season does hurt my soul a little bit to revisit, but at the same time, it was a lot of fun to relive. The new chase format and Gen 6 car revisions led to things that we had never seen in NASCAR. Unbreakable speed records, a seemingly endless amount of beef and fights, and a truly unpredictable championship battle. And while many fans, myself included, were very against the new gimmicky points format, seeing it in action for the first time before it lost its luster was very entertaining. I can't really say the same about it now, but at least for one season, it was a neat experiment, I suppose. Because in 2014, chaos was new. We were still in the era of respectful racing, guarded by veterans of the sport. But now, we expect chaos. Racing with respect is all but dead in 2024. And for better or worse, 2014 was the season that truly kickstarted that shift. And so, NASCAR got exactly what they wanted. A season full of drama, heartbreak, and yes, chaos. For all we know, we may never see a season quite as influential as this one ever again. It's truly one of a kind.
So what do you think? Is 2014 the most chaotic NASCAR season of all time? Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below, but don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and check out DailyDownForce.com for more awesome NASCAR content.